Praise the Lord. Greetings to everyone in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is such a such a great joy. It is a different experience today. We gathered at Brother Steve's house. Change is different. Change is interesting. Sometimes it's difficult also. Shall we look to the Lord for His grace before we pray and commit this time unto the Lord? Shall we turn our Bibles to Genesis chapter 12? Genesis chapter 12. And the passage and the text for our attention this morning as we are going through the sermon series in the book of Genesis is from Genesis chapter 12 verses 10 to chapter 13 verse 4. I shall be reading these verses. This is God's precious word. I request all of you to pay close attention. Now there was a famine in the land. So Abram went down to Egypt to sojourn there. For the famine was severe in the land. When he was about to enter Egypt, he said to Sarai, his wife, I know that you are a woman beautiful in appearance. And when the Egyptians see you, they will say, this is his wife. Then they will kill me, but they will let you live. Say you are my sister, that it may go well with me because of you, and that my life may be spared for your sake. When Abram entered Egypt, the Egyptians saw that the woman was very beautiful. And when the princess of Pharaoh saw her, they praised her to Pharaoh, and the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. And for her sake, he dealt well with Abram, and he had sheep, oxen, male donkeys, male servants, female servants, female donkeys, and camels. But the Lord afflicted Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. So Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this you have done to me? Why did you not tell me that she was your wife? Why did you say she is my sister? So that I took her for my wife. Now then, here is your wife. Take her and go. And Pharaoh gave men orders concerning him. And they sent him away with his wife and all that he had. Chapter 13, first four verses. So Abram went up from Egypt, he and his wife and all that he had, and lot with him into Negib. Now Abram was very rich in livestock, in silver and in gold, and he journeyed on from the Negib as far as Bethel to the place where his test tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Ai, to the place where he had made an altar at the first, and there Abram called upon the name of the Lord. May the Lord bless the reading of his scriptures. Shall we look to the Lord for his grace? Loving Father, gracious God, wonder-working God, Lord, thou art God of Abram. Lord, uh, in the scripture portion that just we read, Lord, uh, it is a real story. Lord, if I were the writer of the book, I wouldn't include these these details. Lord, your word is true. It is living and active. It cuts to the division of our heart. And Lord, it teaches us, it educates us, it enlightens us. So, oh Lord, we come to the throne of grace. We plead mercy that you would speak to us. Lord, we have been hearing your word time and again. Oh, it's such a great opportunity, oh Father. Help us, O oh Lord, that we take action that we do something for our Lord. Help us, O oh Lord, that our lives be transformed. Lord, I pray that you would apply this very word into my own heart. And Lord, to all the hearers, especially to the youth and to every member of the church, Lord, I pray that you would build the church. Speak to us in a special way. Sanctify me. Give me utterance, O oh Father. In Jesus' precious name, I pray and ask. Amen. In Genesis chapter 12, we are introduced to Abram. The Lord called Abram. He had chosen him. And he called him from a unique, different situation. He was coming from idolatry. Last two weeks, we have seen some important uh, aspects with regards to Abram. The starting point, how this man of faith began his spiritual journey. 
we have seen the call of Abram, how the Lord has called him. The Lord promised him three things. I'm going to make, your, make you a great nation and I am going to make your name great. And then he said, I'm going to make you a blessing. The Lord took the responsibility and then he said, it is going to be my doing. You follow in my footsteps. You walk in my ways. You be found in my presence. And then last week we have seen the call of separation. At age 75, Abram, he comes out from Haran and he goes to the land and the place which he doesn't know much about. He makes a journey, he takes his family and then he finally comes to this place called the land of Canaan. This was the place the Lord said you ought to come. He finally comes there, he builds an altar and then he calls upon the name of the Lord. Now in this context, we are introduced from verses 10, a very interesting incident, very sad story in the life of Abram. Abram must have thought it is all over now. Yes, I am saved by grace. God applied his righteousness and he counted because of my action of faith, which was a gift from God, I became righteous. I obeyed the Lord. I came to the land of promise. All the Lord has to do now is to fulfill the promises that which he has made. Many times Christians, believers, don't you think the same? Oh yes, I am saved in the past. The Lord caused me to born again. He revived my soul. He enlightened me. Everything is now complete. I have become perfect. I'm on the way to heaven. Nothing's going to stop me. Don't you think it doesn't matter how I live the rest of the life? You always look to the day of your salvation and you glory in it that the Lord saved you, that the Lord had been merciful to you. But you forget your current situation. You don't take seriously the work of sanctification. Here in this passage, we are introduced how the Lord works in the life of a believer. This is a very important passage that we have here. Two weeks ago, we asked an important question in Genesis chapter 11 at the Tower of Babel. The question was, what was the sin the Lord hates the most in an unbeliever? What is the dangerous sin the Lord hates in the wicked people? We have seen that it originated from the devil, the Satan, which is pride. Pride goes before the fall and pride is the root of all and many evils. This morning, I want, I want us to consider this important question in the same lines. What is the important sin? What is the dangerous sin the Lord hates in a believer? Not in an unbeliever, but in a believer. In other words, if you consider the life of Jesus, if you observe carefully the whole of the earthly life of Jesus, what is the biggest and the greatest lesson that you and I ought to take when you consider the very life of the Lord Jesus Christ? Let me put the question in another way, that way I want us to think. What is the most important principle by which a believer's life must be governed after? Here in this chapter, we find a principle that doesn't come as a doctrinal statement or a statement of theology, but comes practically in a real incident. If you are a child of God, if you are a believer, I request you to pay a close attention because this is for you from the Lord, the principle by which your life and my life must, must be governed after. So as we begin this passage, Abraham just began his spiritual journey. He's 75 years old. Yes, he was saved by the grace of God. He's saved from the eternal damnation, from the wrath of God. But he is not transformed into the likeness of the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the work the Lord begins to do here. How does the Lord do it? The Lord puts a test. 
in this passage we see the lord clearly puts a test and how does he do it by sending a severe famine in the land abraham abram would never have thought in the land of promise in the land where milk and honey would flow how could there be famine he left everything for the lord now what is this terrible situation look how in verse 10 it says now there was a famine in the land so abram went down to egypt to sojourn there for the famine was severe in the land last week we were reminded how the lord allows trials how the lord allow, allows sufferings in our lives in first peter we know peter says dear children of god you are going through grievous trials the purpose is the lord wants to test the genuineness of your faith that it may be purified turn with me to james james chapter 1 let us read few verses there james chapter 1 right after hebrews verse 2 count it all joy my brothers when you meet trials of various kinds this is for the children of god for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness run to verse 12 Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. So the purpose for which the Lord allows trials in our lives to prove our steadfastness and to make us follow in his ways. We know this uh, favorite verse in Jeremiah chapter 17 verses 9 verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick who can know it? But if you read the next verse, do you know what the Lord says? I the Lord search the heart and test the mind. Here is a God who tests. In later chapters we find Sarai when the Lord visits, she says he is a God who sees. He is an everlasting God who sees. Here in the life of Abram, the Lord sends this famine. He wants to test In our spiritual lives also the Lord sends famine. Most common when does the famine come into our lives? Most of the time it is right after abundance. Right when we are full to the brink. Right when life goes very smooth. Suddenly all of a sudden calamity strikes. It could be a job loss, it could be a health crisis, it could be a financial dilemma. whatever it may be calling of the loud one to glory but the lord sends famine into our lives the purpose for which the lord sends the lord wants to test our faith are you prepared my dear brother and sister when the lord sends famine into your life how do you do with the test the lord sends into your life do you pass the test or do you fail in the test Here we see Abram miserably failed the test. And then as we move on to the second aspect in this passage this passage puts forth sheds light very brightly that Abram was a liar. Abram was a liar. How can a man of God of such great faith the one who demonstrated the act of faith and obedience how could this man lie many Christians and Jews who believe in the Lord God and how we work through Abram Abraham Isaac and Jacob they don't like this aspect they justify oh is it not because the family was in severe pain Abram did it to protect his family because the the famine is so severe in the land that's why Abram had to move to that place and he had to uh, lie because of the situation under which he was in Don't you see Rahab didn't she lie to the spies Many ways people try to justify but in this passage we clearly see there is no way you can justify because it is the lord in the later verses we see the lord is unhappy he oppresses pharaoh 
And secondly, you also see in the words of Pharaoh, the heathen, the wicked man, he says in verse 18, What is this you have done to me? Why did you not tell that she was your wife? Why did you say she is my sister so that I took her for my wife? Why did you lie to me, Abram? These are the words of Pharaoh. We cannot justify Abram's lie in any way. He clearly and plainly, he lied. What about you and me? Do you know what does the scripture says with regards to lie? Lies? Proverbs 12.22 says, Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. The Lord hates the lying lips. In Leviticus 9.11, the Lord gave a clear commandment. You shall not steal. You shall not deal falsely with your neighbor. You shall not lie to one another. This is the commandment of the Lord. You remember as we were reading in John's Gospel chapter 8 towards the end of the chapter we see Jesus talking about the people you people are from the earth don't you know your father is the devil from the beginning he was a murderer not only that he was a deceiver he doesn't have any truth he was a liar he makes all false accusations and is the father of lies isn't that true? In Genesis chapter 3, we have seen. Then the Lord said, Adam and Eve, surely you touch the fruit, you shall die. In the same verse you read, Satan replied to Eve, you shall not surely die. This is Satan. This is the devil. This is the lie, the clear lie that we see in the scriptures. The Lord hates the lying lips. When you consider a child, when you observe a child, right from our childhood, the first time, how this comes is you really can't explain. That's why in Psalm 51, David says, a child from his womb, she was born or he was born in iniquity. I was noticing this in my child. One day I asked her, did you wash your hands? She was lazy and she didn't wash and she simply said, yes i know she didn't wash i said you lied then she blushes and says i was just joking we may laugh but it is a serious thing i told her you lied against god lying lips the lord hates you cannot joke about it you lie against the lord how about us when you consider the adults Adults, they don't speak like that. Just like Abram, very polished, very smart, innovative. You hide the truth, you talk half-truth and you try to deceive. But eventually you are deceiving yourself. If you want to clearly understand how the adult does, you can see from Abram itself. Turn with me to Genesis 20. Here Abram gives a clear reason. Here we see not only he lies, he made someone to lie. It seems that he made a pact with his wife. Genesis 20, uh, let me read from verse 12. Besides, she is indeed my sister, the daughter of my father, though not the daughter of my mother, and she became my wife. So she is indeed Abram's sister. Now when the crisis comes, what does he do? What is the pact that he made? Verse 13, and when God caused me to wander from my father's house, Look, we are going to unknown territory. There's going to be danger. I said to her, this is the kindness you must do to me. Sarai, you must do this kindness to me. What is that? At every place to which we come, say of me, he is my brother. You see, he made this agreement with his wife, Sarai, that she got to lie, that Abram is his brother. What about us? What about you? How many times you lie? Examine your own heart. Let me give a small illustration. I know a brother, few years ago, five, six years ago, just like this on a Sunday afternoon, right after the church in the fellowship time, he was having a conversation with one of the fellowship brothers. And then in a conversation, it is a light matter, knowingly or unknowingly, he lied. He goes home and he has a sermon to preach in the evening he was praying and preparing then the holy spirit pondered upon pondered this thought upon 
this man and he couldn't understand he lost the joy he lost the peace he was restless he couldn't preach he couldn't prepare then he has two options either call the pastor and tell him that uh, i'm not ready to preach if he says why he has to lie again the better option would be seek first the forgiveness of god and then call this brother and say sorry so this man calls that brother and then he says this is what happened i lied i sinned i confess my sin i lost my joy so please forgive me then that brother immediately he accepts him it is okay i forgive you and the joy is restored the peace is now instilled and then he joyfully goes to the church you see when you lie some people have a greater problem when you are in this situation you need to seek forgiveness from god not only that you need to go to that person and then you need to ask forgiveness you need to confess that sin i know it is so humiliating but you got to do that let me read one verse in ephesians chapter 4 verse verse 3 let no corrupting talk nasb says unwholesome word come out of your mouths be careful watch your tongue if you have that problem there's an instruction even to the ones who are offended because of the lie if you are offended because of someone's lie when when that person comes to you accept him and then forgive him don't store up any kind of hatred against your brother who lied against you oh it is so important confessing our sins in james 5 16 or 17 right we got to confess our sins with one another that's what the righteous men do so this is the instruction the application that we take from this passage now the big question i want to ask does this passage it was a lot of struggle as i was reading this passage does this passage teach only about lying is it all some of you think i don't have this problem i don't i don't lie is what what message do i have today if you carefully see in this passage lying is just the tip of the mountain tip of the mountain top it is just one small problem of abram it is highlighted but when you come one layer down when you drive down of the mountain top one layer down you see something else secondly in this passage you see that abram was a wife dominator i am not sure if i could say that here we see abram he suppresses the rights by his authority he impresses his own ideas his own interests and rubs on her spouse sarai he gives an order say you are my brother how many times men we impress our own opinion sometimes good or bad without their approval if we do don't you think it is a sin we need to take a lesson here not just abram lying not just he is showing authority over others thirdly we see abram was a coward abram was a fearful man he forgot the fear of the lord he started to fear the people around him he is afraid of men abram became a coward do you know cowards don't inherit the kingdom of god you read that in the book of revelation fourthly we also see abram was a selfish man he seeks his own life his own interests he doesn't even bother to think through that he's putting his own precious wife's life in jeopardy oh the the situation is so pitiable read with me verse 13 say you are my sister that it may go well with me because of you and that my life may be spared for your sake see abram is concerned only about his life his own safety his own life that's what second timothy chapter 3 verse 2 says in the last days paul reminds timothy that the people will be lovers of self this is some 4000 years ago here we find abram a perfect example of a lover of self first corinthians chapter 10 24 
an instruction for all of us. Let no one seek his own good, but the good of his neighbor. Whenever you do transactions, not monetary transactions, whenever you deal with your brother, your relatives, or your neighbors, do you put their interests to the first? Or do you only care about yourself? What do you think, dear friend in the Lord? Don't you examine and regret. Oh Lord, I am saved by grace. Isn't this should be our prayer? But Lord, I have all these human weaknesses that I lie to one another, that I abuse my authority over others, that I am a coward, Lord, that I am a selfish man. Is that your prayer? Shouldn't this be our prayer this morning? May the Lord help that he would impress this into our own hearts. As he was saying, all these sins, this lying is on the top of the mountain. There is something very deep, very unseen problem which Abram has. In fact, we all have. In fact, we struggle every day of our lives. It may shock you when I say the Lord is teaching Abram very, a very important lesson. All of the sins that we just talked about are symptoms or consequences of a bigger problem, a bigger sin that is rooted all the way to the down. To illustrate, I told this before, let me be brief. Sometime back we went to Hawaii. There is this mountain called Mount Mauna Kea and uh, we happened to visit that place. It is sitting, it is taller than Mount Everest. It is the tallest mountain on the planet Earth. I was so excited, you could take the drive, you, all you need is a 4x4 vehicle. Jesse is so small, so we dropped her in the Vista place on the bottom of the mountain. So I took the vehicle and then drove all the way to the top. It was exhilarating ride, exciting. I was on the top of the mountain, I was just so excited in that place. After some time, I was saying, is this the top of the mount, tallest mountain on the planet Earth? Then I lost all the excitement and zeal. Then I, then I investigated what is that. I researched in Google. The thing is, this mountain in Hawaii, the reason why it is taller, it is like 10,000 meters and Mount Everest is only 9,000 meters. So it is taller than Mount Everest. The thing is, 60% of the mountain, it sits underneath the ocean. So when you count from the ocean bottom floor, which you don't see, just 40% is above the sea level. So in the same way, the problem which Abram has is something very deeper. And what is that? This is the lesson that you and I got to take. So the fundamental problem in Abram's life is that he is not seeking God's will and doing God's will. Yes, he began his spiritual life. But he is not seeking the will of the Lord. Lord, what should I do? Lord, where should I go? He is not seeking his guidance. This is the primary problem even in our own lives. That is the reason we have stunted growth in our spiritual lives. Let me make this important statement. A believer, a child of God who does not seek and do the will of God will make his life a spiritual mess. Not seeking and doing God's will is a dangerous sin. Many times when you say God's will, Devun Chittam, Prabhu Chittam, this word has become a cliche term. We use it without making sense of the word. Many of us don't even see and consider that it is a serious sin. Why do I say that this is the fundamental problem of Abram, at least for four important reasons? Look at the consequences of not being in the will of God. Abram was not in the will of God and look at the consequences. Firstly, we see in these verses from verse 10 to 16, God is altogether absent. Abram doesn't even realize, you don't see a mention of God. You don't see any of that. And you also see God doesn't stop him in going to Egypt. He could have stopped, right? God doesn't deal that way. 
and moreover god doesn't scold abram right away what are you doing why are you lying why are you being a coward why are you selfish why are you impressing your opinion on your wife the lord doesn't say all of that and second reason in this passage this is a critical passage for us to understand the world today if you were to think why there is this rage among the nations why there are muslims in the world why there is this jihad this uh, turmoil in the middle east do you know the reason why do you know how ishmael came into being do you know how and who is hagar and how she conceived ishmael read verse 12 here verse 16 i'm sorry and for her sake he dealt well with Ab- abram who is he he is pharaoh and he had sheep it is difficult to understand reading in esv and other translations but if you pick up from nasb it says pharaoh gave sheep oxen male donkeys male servants female servants history says hagar the egyptian came from here if you go to verse 20 when pharaoh gave orders concerning him they sent him away with his wife and all that he had pharaoh doesn't take any of the gifts that he has given that is how because of not being in the will of god look at the grievous consequence and not only that thirdly there is a greater threat to the promised seed this is very important right in this passage see when abram didn't seek and do god's will because of this dangerous grave sin not just ishmael is born but there was a bigger threat to god's eternal plan of salvation do you know why all of a sudden in verse 17 the lord intervenes do you know for whose for on whose behalf the lord intervenes here it clearly says verse 17 but the lord afflicted why because of sarai abram's wife not because of abram's foolish mistakes because of his sins but because of sarai the lord intervenes here you see satan subtly this beautiful woman sarai she was taken by pharaoh she was in the courts of pharaoh and she could possibly in the palace and in the bed and abram entangled in this problem do you know who is sarai sarai is god's chosen vessel she cannot be defiled because the promised seed isaac has to come and through him the lord jesus christ you and i are sitting here because lord's intervention right in verse 17 the lord afflicted the plagues that were sent because of sarai it says great plagues we don't know what those plagues are we went to yellowstone you find this 250 degree fahrenheit boiling gushing geysers coming out in the same way some sort of plagues the lord caused before pharaoh or his princess try to defile sarai abram's wife You see what happens when you're not in the will of God. Fourthly, other important reason why God's will I see as a main reason, the foundational block is because earlier when Abram started his journey, yes, he left Haran. Yes, he obeyed the Lord. but as he was going forward what was he doing the lord gave a clear commandment get out of your country from your kindred from your relatives what did abram do the partial obedience verse 4 he says lot lot came with him oh, which was that verse i forgot but uh, genesis chapter 12 Yeah, Lot came with him, and also it says uh, Abram took. Yeah, verse uh, four and five. You see, so Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. And you see in verse five, and Abram took Sarah his wife and Lot his brother's son. There is this twofold love between Lot and Abram. This partial disobedience, and then you find Lot is with Abram. Lot doesn't deal with this issue right away. 
before the lord teaches this full aspect of obedience and separation god has to teach him a fundamental principle which is you better first learn how to know my will and how to do my will and then in chapter 13 that's what we see in the first four verses he has to come back to the same place where he first pitched his tent between bethel and ai you better come to the place where i planned for you you be you be in my will and then in later verses in chapter 13 we read the lord deals with lord until then the lord was silent he was not even speaking to abram the lord put a test and the abram failed but in doing so lord was showing him his fleshly nature and then he was showing the importance of uh, knowing his will finding his will my dear brother and sister the lord wants us to teach this principle even today spiritual life can progress only when we seek the will of god and do the will of god there is a great tragedy when we don't know the will of god when we don't do the will of god and we have seen how abram failed now let me put forth this important question yes abram did not do the will of god but how abram failed how did he fail in not doing the will of god firstly we see that ref this reflects our own heart follow with me firstly we see in this passage by not doing our own will sorry by doing our own will here we find abram what is he doing he is doing his own will he is taking control of his life he said lord you don't know about egyptians you don't know about these people they are wicked people you don't know how to handle them let me handle them let me be in the driver seat and you sit back and watch me how do i deal look at abram it is very interesting for me in verse 4 and 5 you read abram at age 75 he is very sharp so abram went as the lord had told him in verse 4 you read and then uh, what he says so abram went down to egypt when the famine comes he immediately did the calculations and he runs to egypt egypt is a better place there you could find food and then we see when he was about to enter egypt he makes a conversation with his wife look there's going to be this situation coming he is a perfect uh, what you call uh, analyzer of people he tries to judge people ahead of time and then he he does this forecasting this is what's going to happen so let us be vigilant this is abram he's not doing the will of god he's doing his own selfish will and he doesn't even realize how do we don't do the will of god that he, he doesn't even realize that god left him there is so much drama in this passage because the absence of the presence of the lord fourthly by sojourning in egypt yes he was a sojourner he was to live in the tents but he was not to sojourn in in egypt what was abram's condition now i want us to carefully draw your attention to verse 16 and verse 17 right after verse 16 you see a brief pause there at verse 16 do you know what could be the heart of abram Do you know what situation he is in? What great tragedy he is in? His wife, precious wife Sarai was taken into the palace and he was entangled in his all plans, all of his purposes and plans, master craft, everything crashed. He was in this hopeless, helpless condition. Before verse 17, I could only imagine and we could we could ask abram what was it like what was your heart when we go to heaven we could ask him but now we could only imagine that abram could be crying he could be gnashing his teeth oh my precious wife is in the palace i cannot rescue her what's going to happen now this was the dangerous situation that he put himself in Did something like this happen in your own life? I don't want any of us 
to go through this difficult situation but in my own life i went through something like this two times right after my 10th standard and let me share briefly about what happened i did my masters i was a young man i found a job i went to a new place just like abram i was playing with unknown things i was introduced to new people new friends i was in a place and with people where i am not supposed to sojourn i became very intelligent i said let me craft my career let me make a plan of my future my marriage my life i didn't inquire or sought the will of god i was entangled in my own plans the situation came i was so much deep into the situation that i could not come out it's like the mountain is on top of my head and it's crushing me i couldn't share this to anyone i couldn't go to anyone just like kebram my life was in a total mess all because i didn't find the will of god i didn't knew the will of god i didn't decide to obey the will of god i thought material wise my career going to be excellent i would prosper i would make lot of gain this was the situation i was in oh it was a pitiable situation i was crying crying to the lord lord even you may not you cannot rescue me that was my situation but you know what just like in verse 17 but the lord afflicted in the same way the lord intervened in my life he afflicted the other party and then he miraculously delivered i couldn't even imagine how could i praise the lord but the lord intervened in my life the lord intervened in the life of pharaoh few months after sony came into my life in the will of god then i said lord let me not do my own will let me not work out my plans my intelligence young people today most of the believers they do the same mistake they don't seek the will of god they end up in a total mess imagine if the lord doesn't intervene what what would be your situation oh you must never put yourself in this situation turn with me to judges many times how judges chapter 14 here is a young man mighty man man of valor if you read two verses it is frightening Samson went down went down to Timna and at Timna he saw one of the daughters of the Philistines then he came up and told his father and mother i saw one of the daughters of the Philistines at Timna now get her for me as my wife don't you young people do the very same mistake you find a career on your own you make your own plans you forsake your spiritual parents you don't take their guidance you don't seek the advice of elders if you couldn't find god's will you at least don't seek and walk in the steps of your parents or the elders in the church many times young people with regards to their wedding oh they look for a girl by themselves they make the plans and towards the end they add this tag god's will this is god's will in my life brother all of a sudden you come and surprise this is what the lord has done all you do is you seek your own personal gain you forecast you run the numbers and then your own desires you try to gratify and you don't even realize that you are ending up in mess just like timna go get me that girl it is the will of god in my life oh better be careful don't be stupid don't be foolish don't 
play with fire not knowing the will of god is not an easy thing it is a dangerous sin oh my dear brother and sister and friend in the lord it is a great warning not just to young people and even to all of us many times all our actions if we have to examine are they in the will of god knowing the will of god is a very easy thing but doing the will of god is a difficult thing this is the mighty principle the lord wanted to teach abram first abram i call you you cannot become the father of faith father of the nations you cannot become the friend of god unless you learn this principle in chapter 22 you cannot even pass the great test that when i am going to ask you to offer your own own son that is the important lesson that we find in this passage my dear brother and sister knowing the god's will is a very easy thing there are two kinds of believers today people who don't even care to open the word of god to know his will they don't even read the will of god they think that they memorize in their heads or they simply take take it so casually they don't even seek the will of god open the scriptures god's will is already revealed in the scriptures there are other group of people who read the bible just like a comic book because it's just a routine or a habit that you learnt from your childhood but you don't do the will of god when the word of god clearly speaks to you when other men of god confirms in your life clearly even then you don't agree even then you don't take action god says both of them are useless efforts read the word of god and do and walk in the word of god god says seek first and do my will before i close i want to give three examples two of them very briefly think of brother boxing and many other men of god do you know what one principle the central principle principle do you know their secret it is this knowing the will of god being in the will of god doing the will of god that's their secret secondly our lord jesus christ let us read few verses john's gospel chapter 5 if you were to summarize the life of jesus how can you summarize what did jesus do while he was on the earth john 5:30 i can do nothing on my own as i hear i judge and my judgment is just because i seek not my own will but the will of him who sent me jesus never did his own will he only did the will of god in john chapter 8 verse 29 This is a beautiful chapter we've been in this chapter today and he who sent me is with me he has not left me alone for i always do the things that are pleasing to him jesus did the things always notice that word all the time he did the will of god that which is pleasing to god in john chapter 8 same chapter verse 38 i speak of what i have seen with my father and you do what you have heard from your father there are two fathers here earthly father and heavenly father jesus always did what the father has said but the people in the world even after becoming the children of god they don't hear or do what the heavenly father says what is pleasing to him they only do what the devil says but let me close with the best example you might say jesus is son of god son of man there is one man half the age of abram at about age 35 to 38 turn with me to numbers chapter 13 with this will close there is one man in numbers chapter 13 His name is Caleb. Caleb means literally dog. And when you consider the children of Israel, they are redeemed from Egypt. 
they are delivered from Egypt now they come to Mount Sinai and uh, they encamped there and there you find one young man there are many people there but here is one special man between age 35 to 40 he saw the working of God the giving of Ten Commandments what the Lord did in and through Moses all the Ten Commandments and then he saw this young man how did he know the will of God and he saw the people of Israel they were in gross immorality worshipping the idols and he saw the consequences of that sin and then he saw the instructions from the Lord in making the Ark of the Covenant and also he was there as silently not known in the book of Exodus building the Ark of the Covenant for almost two years he sat under this God he knew this God now here in chapter 13 what we find the context is from Mount Sinai they come to this wilderness of Paran and here an interesting thing happens here the Lord says send men to spy out the land of Canaan here is Caleb one of the spies he goes down there this was the season of first ripe grapes in the valley of Eshkol they get this beautiful wondrous fruit pomegranates figs and grapes the land of Canaan is flowing indeed with milk and honey that's the report they get the fruit is delicious the fruit is abundant it is unlike the wilderness then the people the other spies except Joshua and Caleb they try to say oh when we looked at the people they are mighty their cities are fortified they are strong we are like grasshoppers then immediately Caleb the man of God stood and he quieted them and said we are stronger than them why are you giving this bad report are we grasshoppers are we dogs let us be dogs and grasshoppers for this great God with this God let us conquer the enemy let not glory come to the mighty men let me be the slave let me be the dog and grasshopper for my God let us go conquer at the age of 35 to 40 this is the cry of Caleb and the all the congregation those people foolishly they cried they wailed they gnashed their teeth they grumbled against this God they said let us go back to Egypt then Caleb Moses and Aaron they tore their clothes clothes what is this happening if the Lord delights in us the Lord is delighted to give that land of Canaan why can't we go why don't we take away the fear the Lord is with us the Lord said don't fear them oh what a tragedy was that because of the 40 days that they went out there the Lord cursed them they knew the will of God they did not obey look all the, the same set of people all of them are Jews the children of Israel this man he listened to the word of God he knew the will of God but this is the difference when he knew the will of God he said let us stand on that promise let us go he is unlike Abram at the half of his age this was his cry this was his situation do you know that's why the Lord says sometime back Vijay brother was mentioning one wonderful testimony about Caleb is he's the man who fully followed the Lord turn with me to numbers chapter 14 here the Lord says verse 24 but my servant Caleb because he has a different spirit and has followed me fully I will bring into the land into which he he went and his descendants shall possess it now I want us to carefully contrast Abram there turn with me to Joshua Joshua chapter 14 Joshua chapter 14 fast fast forward 40 years Caleb is now 85 years old in Joshua chapter 14 can you imagine Abram doesn't have any patience 
he said let me run ahead before the lord but look at look at caleb he was waiting for 40 long years in the wilderness he never got disappointed of the lord because he knew god's will he knew god in other words i would simply say fully following the lord is nothing but doing finding and doing god's will you could make it as a synonym this man is unlike abram he did not run ahead he was having patience he never did his own will he never took vengeance in his hands these people are foolish let me fight against them i'm mighty and strong let me read few verses to get a context in joshua chapter 14 here they are about to uh, conquest the enemy and possess the land let me read from verse 10 and now these are the words of uh, caleb and now behold the lord has kept me alive just as he said these 45 years see how he acknowledges god's word and his will and standing on the promises since the time that the lord spoken this word to moses while israel walked in wilderness now behold i am this day 85 years old patiently waited 45 years to get fulfilled on the promise of god i am still as strong today as i was in the day that moses sent me my strength now is as my strength was then for war and for going and coming so now give me this hill country of which the lord has spoken on that day for you heard on that day how the anakim were there with great fortified cities it may be that the lord will be with me and i shall drive them out just as the lord said see how he knew god's will how he was ready to do the will of god in his whole life that's why this beautiful word Hebron, this was given this place as a possession to his family. He testifies in his life at age 85 that I only followed the Lord. I did the will of God. I kept my testimony. We need Caleb's. You and I need to be a Caleb. Shall we pray? Loving Father, gracious God, thank you for this blessed time you have given us. Lord, uh, Lord, your word is so true. Lord, when we contrast Caleb to Abram, Lord, not finding your will, not doing your will, is a dangerous sin. Help us, O oh Lord, in our spiritual lives, Lord, let us not be entangled in a situation whereby our plans, by our craft ideas, keeping you aside, putting ourselves in the driver's seat, playing with unknown things, sojourning in Egypt. Help us that we don't walk in those ways. Lord, put tests in our life. Help us to know your will and Lord do your will and that way O oh Father your name would be glorified. O oh Lord how you turned this Abram to Abraham. This selfish man laid a point of time not even willing to keep his son, sacrifice his own son Isaac. Make us like Caleb's, make us like Abram. Thank you for your word in Jesus precious name I pray. Amen. Amen.